Hey y'all, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about the history of exotic effects and a sleeper exotic pedal that I recently acquired. So today we're going to be demoing this pedal, which is the Exotic Soul Driven, which is the Allen Hines Signature Drive pedal from Exotic. And I think that it's kind of a sleeper pedal because you don't see it on a lot of boards. It's definitely not the most popular exotic effect. Uh, but I played one of these years ago and really kind of fell in love with it and I recently got one again uh, And we're going to be demoing that today But first let's dive into some of the history of exotic effects and how they came to be a staple household name in the effect pedal game So I'm reading from their website here uh, a little bit of their history of exotic effects It was a one-man operation making custom bases and bass preamps um, that are built into the bass guitar so that's how this company started it wasn't even an effect company they still make amazingly beautiful custom guitars and basses today but i think most of us know exotic effects more than we know the exotic guitars and so they've been around for so long and i've heard recently you know from several different people it is kind of amazing that this pedal company has had such success early on and has really sustained that. I think we've all seen exotic effects on everyone's boards, especially maybe 10 years ago. It seemed like everyone, I mean, I know when I was in college, everyone had either a BB plus or an RC plus, which is the dual gain. Um, it's kind of two pedals in one box. Um, from the exotic effects and it seemed like everyone had that when I was in music college I mean that was just kind of on everyone's board you were either on the BB side or on the RC side and they've been a staple I mean on the boards that you see from you know rig rundowns everything to the guys playing at church to the guys playing at you know the clubs downtown um, they've just been a household name and I've always been really fond of all their effects and I've had different variations of their pedals on my boards I mean forever I mean over the last 10 years I've had several different exotic effects that have been staples on my board um, but let's kind of talk about the history and then we'll talk more about the specific pedals and I'm just reading from their website here and I'll throw up some images so exotic you know kind of started off like we said as guitar and bass manufacturers, really high end, they're beautiful and they still make those guitars and basses today, but I think most of us are a lot more familiar with their effect pedals. And so the Robotalk was the first one to come out. And in 1998 is when the Robotalk 1 came out. Um, and then sequentially after that, the 2009, uh, there's the Robotalk 2. But that was the thing that started it all. And that was before they were even called exotic effects. They had uh, PCI and they moved over to Japan. And then in 2002, we saw the AC Booster. And I think that's the lesser known out of the three in my opinion. Uh, I know I'm less familiar with that one um, out of kind of the three big um, staples for them. But in 2002, the AC Booster is the first one uh, that came out. And then that was in September 2002. In November 2002 is when we see the RC booster for the first time and this is really in my opinion you know what changed everything when the RC booster comes out in 2002 that's when you start seeing it everywhere um, so flexible with the you know dual tone pots the treble and bass you can really dial in um, a great sound with any amp uh, and then in 2005 in January we see the BB preamp and the BB is the thing that, you know, has been probably their most successful pedal, you know, as far as longevity. In 2005, we see that for the first time, and then you start seeing it on a ton of boards. LA sound boards, the ones that they design, I feel like the BB preamp has, you know, been one of the most popular pedals on their board builds, and, you know, you just hear that pedal on so many records. Um, and then, the EP booster, which is probably the one that we've just seen the most. Uh, I still think the BB is probably more popular, but the EP booster, it comes out in 2009, and that was a game changer. That's really what started. Now there are so many Echoplex pedals that are both doing the repeats and emulating the preamps. 
But this is really what started that craze. Uh, the EP booster is just that preamp part of the Echoplex, which is what a lot of the guys were you know, using these big tape echoes and just using the preamp to drive their amps. And the EP booster also, in my opinion, is really what started the really small pedals. So now there's tons of them and there's whole lines of pedals like those Amazon cheapo pedals. They're all in this size enclosure up to you know really high-end pedals that are in those small enclosures like the Wampler Tumness or something. And I feel like the EP booster is really the first big one that you started seeing. Like a small pedal was really cool. Uh, it gave you, you know, you saved a lot of real estate on your board and it just sounded great. A lot of people use them always on. It's, you know, their bass tone, their clean tone is an EP booster on. And in 2009 that comes out and I think really from 2009 to now we're in, you know, 2021 you're still seeing that as a staple boost pedal and a staple always on pedal kind of in lieu of a buffer sometimes people want to use an ep booster and it was just a sound you know it's it's a not completely transparent but it's really rich um and that's when we you know really start seeing exotic again kind of the second wave after you see the ac and rc and then the BB, and I kind of put those three together, then you start seeing the EP booster everywhere. And then that also started a craze of Echoplexes. Echoplexes have been awesome for a long time, and a lot of people love them. But I feel like because of the EP booster, that reignited this love and this passion to seek out not only just the delay and tape delay sound of a Echoplex, but the preamp side of it and emulating that. So we'll move on in the history here. In October 2012, we see the SP compressor, great compressor. It was um, the compressor that kind of turned me on to compression pedals. Um, I'd played them before, never really loved any of them until I played the SP compressor. And it was on my board probably for four years, which, you know, this is five years ago for, you know, a single pedal to stay through multiple board changes um, and redesigns, you know, that was saying something. So the SP was on there for a long time. In 2013, in June, we see the SL Drive, which is a great overdrive. I've kind of re-fallen in love with the SL Drive, so we might have to do a demo of that soon as well. Uh, and then they have the Wah, which I have their Wah, and now Volume Pedal, which is in the same treadle housing, um, which is great. It's 20% smaller than like your normal Crybaby. So you save a little bit of real estate, but you're not running into the issue with some of those like mini crybabies. They're just too small for me to like really feel like I have control over my foot. And when you're using that on a tight board, you can accidentally step on the pedal that's above it. Um, and so I think just the housing is great, but the sound is unbelievable. And you can really dial in, you know, the wah sound that you want um, with the bias and the cue control. And then you've got a treble and bass control as well. You know, it's, it's really helps you dial in the wall sound that you want. You're not just stuck with a stock wall. And, you know, from then we start seeing things like the version two of the RC booster that has, you know, two separate gain stages so that you can, you know, swap between two different gain levels, which, you know, gives you a lot of option there. It's just a step up in gain. And then finally in 2016, we see for the first time the soul driven. And it was really different, and I feel like it didn't land um, as big as I feel like it should have. Alan Hines is an incredible player with incredible tone. He's really known for using exotic effects. Uh, but for some reason, I don't feel like it really had the mass, you know, appeal that the RC, BB, and the EP did. Um, but I think it is a great sleeper pedal and that's why we're doing, you know, the video today on it. And then from then, you know, they've come out with several versions that we have the BB plus and the RC plus, um, and then, you know, a few other of those smaller size pedals. And then they have now those clean boosts like the super clean and the super sweet, which are really amazing. Uh, always on boost and EQ kind of preamp pedals. Um, but that's a kind of a quick history of exotic effects. I think it's really interesting um, 
you know, it started out with one guy and really they started on the custom boutique guitar side of things. I didn't even know that. I thought they started on effects and then migrated to guitars and basses, but it's actually the reverse. And so that's a cool kind of quick history on exotic effects. All right, so here we are with the Soul Driven and we're gonna start diving into the demo. One thing I wanna mention is there are two uh, dip switches internally. And I'll quickly uh, kind of throw the graphic up here. And I'll tell you what they do. It is in the stock uh, position, which is both switches on. So um, there is no bass boost. But <clears throat> if you turn position or dip switch one in the on position, you get plus 2.4 decibels at 125 hertz. If you turn just the second dip switch in the on position, you get plus 3.6 decibels at 125 hertz. And then if you have both of them off, you get plus 6 decibels and 125 hertz. So uh, it is in the off position. I find that it's got plenty of low end um, for me, but you know that is something that if you plug into this pedal and you're lacking some low end, you've got some bass boost options. And at 125 hertz, that's gonna really give you a good low end thump there. Um, so I'll just talk about real quick the other gear that I'm using, I've got my Party Smith uh, Swamp Ash Special. Uh, it's been my number one guitar for a long time. Uh, and then I'm going straight into the Apollo using the Fuchs Overdrive Supreme plugin. Um, and here is the reference clean tone. I'm in the neck pickup and humbucker mode. <laughs> I've got a little bit of plate reverb and then one quick slap back in there just to help it kind of feel right in the hands. Um, so that's the clean tone. Let's take a look at this pedal and just the options that we have here. So we've got obviously volume and gain and then the tone knob is really interesting. We've got a kind of dimple point um, which is straight up at noon and I think when you turn it past um, the dimple point in the positive direction, you're going to be adding presence high end and tightening up the low end. And as you turn it down from the dimple point, you're going to be beefing up that low end and it's going to be a little thumpier. Um, and it still remains pretty tight. Um, it doesn't get kind of sloppy necessarily. Um, but you're not pointing kind of the nose of those highs in there. Uh, and then the mid boost is what makes this pedal great. It adds a really rich harmonic content in the mids, and you can dial that in, and it feels like saturation. So it feels very squishy, really smooth to play. So we're going to start with the mids all the way down, and we'll put the gain knob somewhere around 9 o'clock. And we'll just stick with the neck humbucker here. Okay, so plenty of low end for sure and we've got some nice saturation and we're going to leave everything and let's just listen to what this mids knob does so i'll turn it to nine up to the dimple point at noon big change there Let's turn it up. Actually, we'll go to 2 o'clock in the mic setting. And then we'll go all the way up. So 
So you can see that mid boost knob is doing a whole lot there, okay? So let's take this back to the dimple point and let's just hear what the tone knob does. Take this down. It's a lot warmer of a sound. We're going to the bridge pickup. Okay, all the way down. Because of that mid boost, it's not muffled at all. So if we take the mid boost down. Okay, so we've got some volume coming down. We're still in the bridge humbucker there. Now let's take the mid boost back to center. We're going to boost that tone. Now we're pointing, you know, some of those highs, and it's a little honky. Um, let's take it all the way up and see where we're at. Big volume jump there, okay? So we're gonna take this back to that center dimple point. We're gonna leave the mids in the center point as well. And then let's boost this gain up. Plenty of gain on tap for sure. And then gain all the way up. singing lead sound to me. It's not necessarily high gain. It is pushing that high gain territory, uh, but there's something that's really smooth and organic still sounding about it. Let's go to the neck. Lot of sustain there with the gain that high. I really liked the gain, just barely pushing noon. And let's hear how this mid boost affects when we've got higher gain. Push it a little bit. That sounds really good to me. It's got a little more point to it. Now if we split, so when we split to the single coil mode here in the neck pickup, 
you can hear it's really retaining a lot of clarity. Uh, there's a lot of top end presence and it doesn't feel so saturated. However, when you're playing it, it gives you that sensation, even though you're not hearing necessarily as saturated. <laughs> hearing necessarily as much saturation you know you can get a really good kind of modern blues tone with this. That's a great, really juicy, creamy tone. If we take the treble down just a little bit, we might get rid of some of that nose. Okay, and it cleans up really well. So even when we go to the humbucker mode, it's a really dynamic pedal. I would say it's not like the most dynamic. Um, you know, you're not getting crystal clean to like shreddy gain there, but it is a really nice gradual increase of gain with just your guitar's volume. And, you know, that's something that I really, really look for in drive pedals is how does it interact? Because I'm always changing my volume knob. I'm always changing my tone knob. And I want to hear something that is playing with it because there are some drive pedals that just start to fall apart when you back off the drive um, or the volume rather from your guitar. And as you, you know, roll down the tone a little bit, they'll get really muddy. But this one, even in the neck pickup, humbucker, tones rolled back, volumes rolled back. You know, it's not overly muddy. You know, and I'm hearing so much low end with this pedal, which is great. Um, it's not shelving all your low end. Um, it is surprising to me that there's even more low end boost internally. Um, I can't imagine really wanting much more low end than this. <laughs> so much low end. And you've got that kind of weightiness. There's a lot of heaviness as you pick, you know, just like... There's a lot of weight as you really dig in. It's almost like having some dumbbells on your fingers or something. weight there. Um, 
Man, this pedal is really great. Let's hear some of the lower gain tones that we can get. We'll bring these back to their noon position, bring the gain down. Man, really great lower gain tones. I kind of tend to like the game somewhere around, around the nine o'clock position, boost the mids a little bit and cut the tone. <laughs> That's kind of the, the place that this drive pedal for me is getting what I want out of it, which is I've got a plenty of dynamic range, but it's really singing. And as I dig in, it's very squishy. It compresses a lot, but in a really musical way, it kind of want, it gets me to a place that I want to keep playing. And that's really what you want out of this gear. I mean, this gear is really fun, uh, you know, playing different guitars and pedals and amps and plugins um, are really fun to get nerdy about them. But at the end of the day, if they're not inspiring you to keep playing, um, you know, I don't know that they're serving their purpose, um, you know, as we geek out on some of these things. But I'll get off my soapbox. Uh, one more thing before we kind of finish this. Let's do all knobs at two o'clock. Um, so it's where Mick from that pedal show says everything sounds the best and sometimes that's right and sometimes that's not, but here we go. <laughs> definitely works on this pedal. Uh, yeah, that's the Soul Driven. I think this is a sleeper exotic um, drive pedal. It's definitely different than the BB, the RC, or the AC. Um, it definitely has some characteristics similar to the SL drive. Um, but this one's just a little more, I don't know, it's, a, it's definitely more compressed and organic um, and more versatile uh, for sure than the SL drive. Um, but it has a sound. I mean, it's definitely got a upper mid-range that is pretty present throughout it, which is, you know, one of those things that works really well in the mix of a band, um, both live and when you're recording. It just fits right in that uh, place where the guitar is supposed to sit. But sometimes it can sound 
a little lacking on its own. This one doesn't because of all the bottom end that's there. Um, frankly, I would even probably shelf a little of the bottom end um, in a mix. You know, their lows would definitely be taken out uh, using this pedal. However, I would rather be on the end of having the low end uh, and taking some away rather than not having enough low end and it sounding thin. So this definitely airs on all the sides of things that I like. And to me, it feels um, really similar to my favorite drive pedal of all time, which is the Love Pedal Kanji Eternity. Um, there's just that similar upper mid-range thing and uh, really singing compression that happens uh, in this pedal and it, it makes me feel like that pedal and so that's really awesome. Uh, definitely got more gain on tap um, and this one's definitely easier to find than a kanji. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video on this sleeper pedal, uh, demoing the exotic soul driven and kind of diving into a little bit of the history of exotic effects. Uh, if this is the kind of content that you enjoy, uh, please like and subscribe and then ring that bell. That'll let you know when I have new videos coming out and share this channel. It's a new channel um, with other gearheads uh, like myself. And, you know, let me know what kind of pedals that you would like to see me demo next. Uh, and what other kind of content ideas that you have. Um, I'm definitely all open ears for that. And until next time, I've been Colin. Hey, how's it going? Okay. But let's... <sighs> Exotic effects for me have been... Exotic effects... Okay. Can't let it go. Okay. This pedal... Okay. okay. I need to say something different. So today we're going to be demoing this, you know, ordering and the mass... like a small pedal a small pedal was really I definitely I keep saying definitely goodness and it's kind of diving in with oh. today's video on this uh, that was quick I definitely dig it um, and I hope that you enjoyed this demo wow.